Good morning, church. How many is ready for the word? I know I am. You know, all growing up, I was like, I'm short. And I, I always said I was 5'8", you know, once I got to where I didn't grow anymore. Technically, I'm 5'7 and 3 quarters of an inch. But we don't talk about that quarter inch. I'm 5'8", you know, I just say it. But I've always, you know, like wanted to be just a little taller so I could, you know, dunk the basketball or whatever. I could always dunk a little tennis ball, but that's as far as I could get. But I thought that was pretty good for being 5'8", or 5'7 and 3 quarters. I was 5'8 with the tennis shoes, though, at least. So dunking a tennis ball, I mean, that was just monumental for me. It took me a long time. I would get on the stairs, and I would do all these, like, calf exercises so I could try to spring more, you know. Um, but I still just could not get the basketball. But, uh, you know, you really got to hand it to short people because they usually can't reach it anyways. If you <laughs> God is good. I just got told <clears throat> that somebody, they were like, you know, I still didn't get that joke from last week. I don't remember what it was, but I still don't remember. But if you didn't get it, after the service, ask me, I'll explain it to you. Or you can just ask your neighbor, the ones that did laugh. They'll tell you, I know it's bad, I know it's bad. Nahum 1, 7, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. Last week, we began talking about the, uh, uh, the Lord, how he is just, he's good. And so I was trying to figure out what to title the sermon series, and I was talking with Pastor Justin. I was like, do we just say the Lord is good? And he goes, how about just so good? I was like, I said, yeah, that's so good. Uh, I know, I got, I know, I got, <sighs> they're bad, I know. But, <laughs> but God is, he's just, he's so good. And as I go through my week, as I study and I look at what the Word says, more and more, I just, I realize and I know that He is so good. So let's look at the so good list based off this scripture we just read. The Lord is good. And this is, see, these are things, this is the character and nature of our God. You know, that scripture in Nahum, you know, verse 7 of chapter 1 there, you can go look at the context. You can go look at that and study it. It's fascinating. It's awesome. It's, it's really good. But the thing is, this verse here, this shows us something about the character and the nature of God. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So therefore, these still hold true. Doesn't matter what the context was at the time or whatever, any of that. That's why I didn't go into it this time. And I usually, I'm a context guy. I like to try to at least. For the most part, but he, the, he is good. He is a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who know and trust in him. This is so good. That's why we call it the so good list. It's good because it's in his character. Look at this statement here. God can never be not good, not even for a split second. This reality should fill us with joy. Absolutely, because when we see how good God is, it makes us joyful. Because even though I'm going through all kinds of stuff, God's still on the throne. He hasn't left. He's still there. And he's, yes, he's on the throne of, you know, the third heaven or however you want to call it, the throne room, but he's on the throne of my heart. He's right here. I feel him. I feel God on the inside. And that's how I can say God is so good. I remember when I was a teenager, probably about 13, I think that's what it was, I was going on a missions trip to Jamaica, and I've talked about this before, but I was on a plane, and these people on the plane, I got sat from different, we all got scattered because of the seats and how it worked, you know, so everybody going on the mission trip, they, they weren't really sitting next, we weren't sitting next to each other, so we're scattered all over the plane. And so I'm sandwiched in between two people who are like devout atheists. All the, I had no idea. And they're sitting there and they're telling me 
uh, asking me because I had pulled out my Bible and I was going to read some while I was on the plane. And so they're telling me, hey, how do you know that's true? And how do you, okay, so you're, you know, Christian, all this stuff. So I started going, and I'm asking all these questions. And, you know, I started feeling really bad and, and all of this because they were smart and they're adults and they've got, and one of them literally had one of those science books, you know, explaining how the world came to be. And I'm just like, how in the world did I get caught in this? And this guy behind me, he leans over and says for me to come sit next to him. He had a seat open and uh, he wasn't on our trip and he was a Christian. And he sat there and he opened up the word and he showed me why, you know, the answers to their questions nice and loud so they could hear, you know. And uh, I'll never forget that man. And I remember, you know, I, I don't remember his name, but I'll never forget him. Because I believe that that whole scenario and how that all played out, I believe that God intervened in that moment in time just for me. My faith was built for the rest of that flight. He just kept going on and on and on. And I didn't know this man from Adam. It was just wonderful. Uh, and that's how that, and when I was done with it, and I look back and I go, God, you're so good. You're so good. What are the chances that something like that could happen? What are the chances? I believe it was the Lord. Now, maybe somebody believes, oh, it's just coincidence and all that. And I do believe in coincidences, you know, to a certain extent. But I do know God helps out when we need help. He knows and he can sees. And he shows himself strong to those who need it. Amen. And to those who will put their trust in him. Let's look back at that so good list just for a moment. The Lord is good. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who know and trust in him. And so we're going to talk about these two. He is a stronghold in the day of trouble. And in Psalms 34, 8, we see, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. God, yes, he's good just simply uh, because that's who he is. But also, number two, he is a stronghold in the day of trouble. He is a stronghold in the day of trouble. Now, let's look back at verse 7 there in Nahum again. It says it right there, a stronghold in the day of trouble. Now, what exactly is a stronghold? Now, stronghold in the Hebrew, it says it's a place, a place or means of safety, protection, refuge. All right, so what does that look like for us? Now, let's look at what Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 3, and we're going to begin reading. As soon as I find it in my notes, I was here. Proverbs 18, I'm sorry, Proverbs 18. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. So when we say he's a stronghold in the day of trouble, it's like, okay, well, what does that mean for me? How does that work out in day-to-day in, in -day life? How do I do that? What do I do? so that the Lord is a stronghold for me. He's this safe place. What do I do? This tells us right here. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Mm. So the name of the Lord is safety for us. So when we call on the name of the Lord, He's a stronghold and that strong tower of defense for you and me. But what do we have to do? We have to call on him. We have to call his name. The name of the Lord is that strong tower. In other words, I have to talk to him. If something's going on in my house, I can be in the kitchen and I could be like getting something out of the cabinet and all of a sudden stuff's falling and I'm like catching it like this and I, it, oh no. And so I have to call on somebody's name around me to come and help me. And hopefully somebody's home other than just the dog. Right? Or I'm going to drop stuff. Stuff's going to fall. It's going to happen. And see, I, had to, I have to call on somebody's name because they don't know what's going on. They could be sitting over watching TV. They could be sitting at the table eating. They may not be looking at me. But see, the Lord, He's always looking. He's right there. Oh, and we got another sermon series coming up 
after Mark Shell next week about the eyes of the Lord. Don't, man, I can't wait. I'm already stoked on that one. Listen to this, though. A strong tower raises you above your enemies. Amen. See, you don't have to come down here and, all right, what we're going to do, we're going to get this on. Maybe I should punch him in the throat. Maybe I should punch him in the gut. We don't have to do all that. All we do is go, Jesus. We just got raised right there. Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And what are we going to do? We're going to run to it and we're safe. We're, gonna, we're safe. Run to it and, and are safe. You know, this phrase here, so many times, you know, we run to our own wisdom or the wisdom of the world before we battle it, you know. I remember years ago, we were back at the, we had our church office was at Tackett's Mill in Lake Ridge. And um, I remember I was having trouble with my computer on a certain aspect. And I remember saying, you know, because Pastor Justin, you know, he's a, man, he was really good with all the computers. And stuff. I'm like, man, I need help. Help me figure this out. And so he's on his computer with the same program. We're trying to figure, you know, something out there. He's got, and, and, and I figured he would know how to do it and do it. And I'm telling you, 99.9% .9 of the time, he's got the answer pretty fast. But on this one, we were struggling. I think it was like, you know, one of those, I can't remember which program this was. I really can't remember. But I just remember he was struggling on figuring out what was going on. I was like, all right, well, let's just look it up. And so... He kept doing that, and I went over there, and I, what, Googled it, right, or Yahoo, or whatever I was using at the time. This was a while back. And the answer just so happened to come right up, which is a miracle. You know how sometimes when you really need to find something, you still can't find it? A lot of times it's right there, and you can, it, it's, it's fast. It's, you know, boom. And so I told him that, and he's like, oh, okay, yeah, we're good. All right, so it was quick looking it up. And so see, there's more, we've got all these options it's a lot of times when we're going through something or there's a problem we've got to fix, there's different ways to go about it. We can just go and start clicking and go and trying to figure out. We can do that route or we can search it or we may pick up the phone and call somebody else to help us with this computer, whatever it may be. We've got all these options. Which one's the best one? Which one's the fastest? Which one's the one that I need? I'm not too sure. But see, when I'm going through something, not a computer problem, when I'm going through something that's a relationship issue or a financial issue, I don't need options. All I need is Jesus. The name of the Lord is a stronghold. He's a strong tower. He's a stronghold for me. He's that place of safety, that refuge. I want his wisdom, not everybody else's at that point. Look, there's a lot of people, and I've got people, they call me. They call me all the time. I got people asking me for relationship advice, financial advice, all kinds of things. It's not, a week does not go by that somebody doesn't ask me a question in one of those areas and needs advice. And see, you know, a lot of times what I'm thinking is, I don't really know. As they're telling me all this stuff, I'm going, I don't know. But they're calling me. It's like one of those options I was describing earlier. You know, pick up the phone and call somebody. Oh, okay, let's call, let's call TJ. Maybe he knows. And a lot of times my answer is, I don't know, you need to go pray about it. You need to go to talk to somebody else about it. You need to talk to God about it. So sometimes I'll just ask that right up front. Have you prayed about this? Have you asked God about it? You know. And most of the time now, many of the people who call, they've already talked to the Lord about it now. Because they know I'm going to ask that question. Because, see, my wisdom might be what you need. It might be fine. It might be great. But it might not. It might not. Why? I'm a man. I'm not God. I'm a man. And so man's wisdom compared to God's wisdom, no, 
I need to call on the name of the Lord. In Psalms 94, 22, it says, but the Lord has been my stronghold and my God, the rock of my refuge. So through bad circumstances, trials, burdens, hurts, dips, disappointments, trouble, the Lord is with you. He's right there as your stronghold if you run to it. You could be standing outside the castle. We're way back in the day. We're standing outside the castle. An army is coming with all their arrows and swords and shields and all this kind of stuff. You can stand outside the fortress and be like, oh, that's all right, I got my fortress. And you can just stand right there and you can be an idiot and be killed. Or you can run up into the tower. And many times, that's why when I was looking at this and studying this, I was thinking about it. I was like, so many times I just start freaking out. I just start freaking out. And, you know, I'm standing outside the tower and I'm looking at the enemy coming it's like, yeah, I know, I'm a Christian, I've got, you know, so through life, oh, so I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to, yeah, everything's going to be great. Everything's going to be fine. And I'm sitting outside the fortress, and then when that army comes, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, no, I need to call on the name of the Lord and get in there. That's running to it. I have to call on the name of the Lord. Remember our scripture from Isaiah a few weeks ago? Isaiah 43, 2, it says, When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. Doesn't matter what you're facing. It doesn't matter. If you call on his name, he'll bring you through. Did I say he's going to answer you in the way you want? No. Hear me, church, I did not say he's going to answer you in the way you want or in the timing that you want. See, I go to the strong tower so I can get peace. But sometimes I'll run to the Lord, I run to the tower. The army is on the outside, and yeah, I know I'm safe, but man, I can see like through that little window in the tower, you know, these arrows are smacking up, the, you know, this fire is bursting outside, there's all this stuff coming, and I'm just like, eh, I don't know. Is this going to hold up? It will. You have to stay in there. You have to stay in there. And again, the battle's still going to be going on. But I'm in the tower. I'm in the stronghold so I can make it through that battle. The battles are always going to come. We win by being in the stronghold, in that strong tower. Number three, he knows those who trust in him. He knows those who trust in him. So we've got three things on our so good list. The Lord is good. He is a stronghold in the day of trouble. And number three, he knows those who trust in him. See, the Lord is so good that he provides himself as a strong stronghold or a strong tower. And he's also so good that he is willing to know, to know you and me. See, what does that mean? You say, well, TJ, well, he's God. Of course he knows me. No, 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 no. I'm talking about you knowing he knows you. I mean, catch that. You knowing that he knows you. Because why? You're talking with him. You're communicating with him. It's that kind of no. It's not, oh, he knows, oh, he created you. He's created all everybody. He's God. So, of course, oh, yeah, he knows everything about everybody. Okay. But do you know he knows you? Because you've been talking with him. You've established that relationship with him. In Nahum 1.7, again, we see it there. And he knows those who trust in him. Now, this word know or knows in the Hebrew is yada. Now, we've talked about this word before. The simple meaning is to just to know. That's in the most, co most common translation out of all the 800 or more uses. One of the primary uses means to know relationally or experientially. So through experiences and through relationship, I am knowing God. In this context, that's what it's talking about. It's God's knowing of persons, knowing his true servants 
recognizing and acknowledging them. Understand, he knows those who trust in him. He don't know everybody like that. Do you realize there's Christians all in America, everywhere, and God doesn't know them in the same way that he knows Christians who trust in him? You say, well, TJ, how can that be? Because it's right there. I didn't write it. See, this is not talking about God's knowledge of each person. No, this is talking about relationally experientially, how God knows you, you know him. It's that relationship, and it's those who trust, and that is the key. So in all his goodness, he says, I know you, I recognize you, I acknowledge you, but who does he know? Who does he acknowledge? Those who trust in him. Trust is the key. So what does trust mean? The Strong's definition, I want to put it up here for you today. It's H2620, Hasa, Hasa. And it means to flee for protection. See, we've been talking about this in the sense of a strong tower, a stronghold. But the word trust, when you see it in the Hebrew, it's meaning God is right there with you. He's got you. He's got, look, you're still going to go through stuff. You're still going to go through stuff. God said, it's, you know, Lord Jesus, he said, trials and tribulations, they're coming. Everybody gets them. But do you trust me through them? Do you trust them through them? Listen, it says fig- figuratively it's to confide in. Have hope. Make refuge. I love this one, the one part here. To confide in. See, God already knows but he wants us to confide in. In the same way, I go, hey, babe, guess what just happened today? You know, she got home. She's coming home. I'm like, hey, babe, sit right here. I got to tell you something. I got to tell you something. Don't tell anybody else. What did I just, and then I just start, I'm confiding in her. Today after church, I'm going to go home. I'm going to get changed. I'm packing up my bags. I'm going to Virginia Beach this week. Okay, I'm taking my wife down there to Virginia Beach. I'm excited about that. As we drive down, we're going to be confiding in each other the whole way. You know. Things that I talk to her about, she doesn't go out there and just say everything but what I say. Do you, honey? You don't do that, right? Okay, just, just thought I'd make sure. Because <laughs> I don't tell everybody what you tell me. I'm just, you know. So we confide in one another. That's what this means. I'm confiding in him. And I trust God more than anybody else on this planet. My hope, my confidence needs to be in him. If I don't have hope, I'm filled with nothing but doubt. And hope is faith in that future sense. I've got to trust my hope, my faith is in him. How am I going to make it to a strong tower if I'm doing nothing but doubting? I'm not going to get there. I'm not going to make it. And so I've got to come against doubt in my life and put it under my feet. Look at this in Proverbs 3. Here's the Proverbs 3 I was thinking of earlier. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understandings. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Now, who in here has heard these verses? That's everybody, right? I'm not going over tons of verses that people don't know. It's not, it's, it's not complicated. It's not hard. But look in verse 5. Trust. Trust in the Lord. That right there. Solomon advised his son to live a life of trust in God. Solomon had found that God was worthy to be trusted. I'm going to keep reading from my notes for a moment. It is our nature to put our trust in something or someone, even if it is ourself. Solomon told us to consciously put our trust in the Lord. The Hebrew word for trust is a little different than what we see in Nahum here. It literally means to trust, to have confidence in, secure, but it's more than that. Warren Worsby said this, 
The word translated trust in verse 5 means to lie helpless, face down. It pictures a servant waiting for the master's command in readiness to obey or a defeated soldier yielding himself to the conquering general. In other words, I have to totally give up me. I got to totally give up. If I'm trying to do it on my own in my own wisdom, it's not going to go so far. You say, well, TJ, I know this. I know. I know you do. Guess who else knows it? Me. But do I always do it? No. That's why we have to be told over and over again. That's why the scripture talks about renewing your mind. You have to renew your mind. We have to do that on a daily basis. And see, this week, I had to get into the Word and get into what, you know, the translations and what they're meaning, what they're talking about. And more and more, I'm sitting there. My faith is being built as I'm studying and the more I'm reading, and I'm putting more trust in God no matter what's happening. But if I don't get to the Word, if I don't call on His name, because it says the name of the Lord is, I'm not going to get there. I'm not going to get there. I have to trust in him 100%. Notice it says to do this with all your heart. In all your ways, acknowledge him. But see that first part, trust in the Lord with all your heart. With all your heart. I, I can't put just half my trust in God and half in something else. That's failure to trust the Lord at all. It doesn't work. You can't have one leg on the side of the fence and, oh, this is trusting God, and the other leg and trusting in my own wisdom and the wisdom of the... No. Now, the Lord gives us wisdom that's still the Lord, and you know it's from Him. And James tells us, if you don't have it, go ask for it. And He naturally gives us wisdom for things in this world that we have to go through or, or face or do. And He gives us naturally gives us wisdom to go through just... Things that, you know, like making a sandwich. I, put, I bring that up all the time. You don't have to ask God what sandwich to make. He does not care. He's given you the wisdom to know, hey, today it's okay for me to put on some more pepperoni and salami and some of that extra, you know, stuff. Because yesterday I had the, the healthier version. Today I can have like a little bit of a cheat day. I can put all this extra stuff on there. You know what's really good is black forest ham. Then you have pepperoni. Then you put salami on there like that. Lettuce, tomato. Oh, man, squirt that on there with some uh, vinegar and oil and vinegar. I'm telling you, you put that on one of those hoagie rolls, you're set. You're set. Oh, I almost, how could I have forgotten I am so sorry. Church, I can't believe it because bacon is life. You got to add bacon to that. And I know that it's salty. It's okay. Because see, especially if you go do this and you get this sub at Subway, you can get the cookie to wash it down. You got the salt and then you got the sweet to kind of mm -hmm, take care of that. Yes. That's wisdom, church. See, you got the really salty and you're going, oh, man, it's just, I'm just so salty, and the water's just not doing it. Oh, the cookie. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, wisdom. Wisdom. <sighs> I don't know if that one's my own or what, but I want to read this from my notes. This thing about, you know, trusting in the Lord with all your heart. See, sometimes this aspect troubles some because they fear this is, that there is some part of their heart that is not truly trusting God. We may sympathize with this concern knowing that as imperfect people, it is impossible for us to trust in the Lord perfectly. In principle, we gather that Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 does not describe an objectively perfect trust in God, but a heart and life that does not consciously reject or defy God with unbelief. I thought that was really good because see, sometimes we get into this thing of where, oh, am I trusting? Am I doing it right? Am I praying enough? Have I read it? Oh, I forgot to read my Bible yesterday. Oh my gosh. And we feel like we don't measure up. 
And we have this feeling like we're inadequate. We don't measure. And like we're, we're, we're lacking in our faith. Or that means that, oh, I'm not totally trusting in the Lord. Church, just breathe the name of the Lord. You're good. You're good. You're his child. Look, we've got all kinds of chores in my house that have to be done. I've got four children. They have responsibilities. The chores get done most of the time, the things that need to get done. But you know, sometimes some of them don't get done or they don't get done perfectly or whatever. And you know what I have for that? Grace. Because I'm not OCD. All right, on all of it. Now, some of it I am. I'm just like, I cannot take this any longer. Boy, you better pick this up. You know what I mean? Sometimes it gets like that. But most of the time, I exhibit grace. What do you think the Heavenly Father's doing? Church, trust in the Lord with all of your being to the extent that you know how. A amen? amen? And let's call on the name of the Lord and let's not let the enemy beat you up with doubt. The enemy beat you up and tell you that you're inadequate. Let the enemy beat you up and say, well, see, you didn't read and pray enough here. You didn't do that. Oh, see how you responded to that person? That wasn't so nice. Don't let the enemy beat you up with that. You go to the Lord, call on the name of the Lord, receive his grace, and put your trust in him. Mm. Charles Bridges, he says this, This trust is not the mere cold ascent of enlightenment, enlightened judgment. It is trust with all your heart. It is a childlike, unwavering confidence in our Father's well-proven wisdom, faithfulness, and love. So when this, that's what the scriptures mean by lean not to your own understanding. Trusting God with all of our heart means to decide to put away our own understanding and instead to choose to trust God in his understanding, especially as declared in his word. See, if it's declared in the word, I should be trusting that. If the word said it, I can take it to the bank. I can trust in that. You know, there's certain times in life, you know, just all through, there's certain individuals I can ask, hey, I need you to help me with this. Why? Because I know that they can, I can trust them to help me with said thing that I'm asking. But that person is not the person to ask in certain other aspects or things that, that I, I need help with. I have to call somebody else because they just don't, they may not have the knowledge or whatever it may be. I can't trust them to know what to do. So I have to go to somebody else. Like, church, let me give you an example. Do not call me if your dishwasher breaks. I can't help you. If your oven breaks down, I'm going to hang up on you. I don't want no part of that. You know, I don't know what to do with that. Call somebody else that knows. But there's other things I can help you with. There's other things I can pray with you about. There's other things I can do. But don't ask me the, how to fix an appliance, because I don't know. I don't have that knowledge. So see, but what we do know is that when we're fretting, or we start to stress, or we start to fear, or there's a moment of doubt, we can call on the name of the Lord, because He knows all of it. Amen. He knows all of it. Now you say, well, TJ, well, He's not going to give me the wisdom and knowledge on how to fix a... A, a dishwasher? No, but I'm sure he's giving you the wisdom on how to pick up a phone. Right. <laughs> right? So we trust in him and we lean not to our own understanding. Adam, Adam Clark says it like this, it is on God, not on thyself, that thou art commanded to depend. He who trusts in his own heart is a fool. Self-sufficiency and self-dependence have been the ruin of mankind ever since the fall of Adam. The grand sin of the human race is their continual endeavor to live independently of God. See, that's why it says, in all of your ways, acknowledge him. I'm not to live independently of God. In all of my ways, I acknowledge him, and he is going to direct my path. Trusting in God means to honor, with all my heart, means to honor and acknowledge him in everything that I'm doing. To whatever extent that I know how, as much as I can. I put God into my everyday life, in my in conduct. 
I don't wake up one day and say, okay, God, good morning. Nice to see you. I'll see you tomorrow and just go do my day by myself. I don't do that. That's what's called being a fool. That's what's called being a fool. Amen. Yeah, that's right. He shall direct your paths. Now, this is a great principle that God responds. Because, see, like I said earlier, you know, we've got all these choices a lot of times of what we can do. And the path, literally in the scripture, when I was reading on one of the commentaries, I don't have it written down. It's like, it's like he's straightening the path. You know, because we've got all these ways. He makes it very clear. It's, he makes the crooked ways straight. That's what God does for us. He'll direct that path, and he makes it straight, and it's easy. You know, when I was teaching my kids to drive, going straight wasn't too bad most of the time. But when once we start getting into making a lot of turns, okay, you know, on stage line, okay, we're going to take this one easy. I'm starting to hold on naturally, you know, to the door. We're going down on this one air. We're making the turn. I'm looking in the rearview mirror. Okay, we got two lanes. I said, son, don't hit the curb. If anything, you go over and play Pac-Man on those lines, those dotted, you know, sh the dashes. Wink, wink, wink. Never mind. Anyway, so we did a lot of Pac-Man. You know, we made sure we did it at the time of day. There's not all these cars going on. But they had to learn to take those curves and things because it's not easy. But see, what God does is he just makes it straight. That's easy. And you don't have to move. He makes the crooked ways straight for you and me. More than a few are afraid to have God direct their paths. They'd much rather just direct themselves. I, and and I, can't, I, I can't say it enough. Trust in God. I've got individuals, they've been trying to figure out life. Their, I mean, since they were little, they've been trying to figure it all out, you know. And I'm like, just, just trust in God, trust in God. And here's what we need to do. We've got to surrender to God. And today we need to decide to do a few things, three things. Number one, we decide to put our trust in the Lord. We just make that decision. And then we decide to not trust in our own understanding, but to give attention and priority to God's revealed word. See, that part's, you know, we, that's where we start. What does God's word say about it? And then on top of that, God will begin to speak to you on top of that and through that. But start with his revealed word. If you're not reading the word or listening to it, get started. Get started. Number three, decide to acknowledge and honor God in all that we do. Don't cut him out. Don't cut him out. Church, I've heard about this one couple, married couple, been married for years. Husband comes home with a brand new car. Didn't tell his wife he was getting it, doing nothing. And it's not like they're just, you know, rich, rich. You know, it's not like that. The wife was just like, what do you mean? Why'd you, you didn't say nothing to me. You didn't ask me. We didn't talk about this. He just went and did it on his own. Guess who's not that stupid? I enjoy my bed. I like my pillow right there. I enjoy being on that side of the bed. My wife has taken care of our finances from the jump. I have never balanced our checkbook or whatever, or do the program, whatever she does. I've never done anything. It's all her. And you better believe, if I'm going to go do something like that, I'm talking to her first. I'm not, I'm not a fool. That right there would make me a sucker fool right there. I'd be, that'd be bad. But see, we make decisions and we do things a lot of times and we don't acknowledge God. It's like we just leave him. So we have to decide to acknowledge and honor God in all that we do. And when we do these things, these three things, we can trust that God will direct our path. We can go forward in peace, believing that through his word, through the leading of the Holy Spirit, through the counsel of others that we've gone to, brothers and sisters, that you know, through godly common sense sometimes and through life circumstances, God, he's gonna direct through all of it. He's gonna direct our paths. We'll walk along our way of life and come to see that we've been on the path that God's intended all along if we've just, we're just calling on his name. 
G. Campbell Morgan gave his own testimony to the truth of Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6. He says this, The measure in which I have trusted Jehovah and acknowledged Him has been the measure of walking in the paths of real life. Walking in real life. Mm. The measure that I trust in God is the measure that we walk that path of real life. Let's stand. I just thought this was really good. That quote there. Wanted to make sure you had it. Church, our so good list that we started from the very beginning, it's these three things. The Lord is good. He is a stronghold in the day of trouble. And He knows those who know and trust in Him. The character, the very character, which we went over last week in detail, so if you missed last week, get it. The very character and nature of God is that He is good. He is good. He is a stronghold. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. We're raised above our enemies. We know that the enemy is Satan. We know that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We know that. But a lot of times people just, you know, the enemy's working through other people and coming at us. But what we do is we call on the name of the Lord. The Lord is so good that you can trust him with your whole life. And he'll know you in a way that not everybody gets when you trust in him. Because it says he knows those who know and trust in him. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. So, as we go through our days, are we hearing the voice of the Lord? If we're not, that means we haven't totally acknowledged the Lord as directing my path. The Lord as my strong tower. I'm not, I have to acknowledge Him in all my ways. When I wake up in the morning, church, you got to set your day. You got to set it. Now, see, what's going to happen out of this is your faith is going to start to get built. This is the good part. When you begin to acknowledge Him, acknowledge His goodness and trust in Him with all of the things that you go through, when you're faced with something heavy, you have faith to go through that. I've learned that people gone through something, I'm like, man, why didn't you tell me? It's like, God's got it. I'm like, ooh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Okay, okay. I I like to know, though. I want to pray and I want to agree with you, you know. But the Lord was bringing them through. The Lord was doing it. Their faith had been built to that point. Church, let's build our faith on a day-to-day basis. And what's going to happen is, is when somebody, also the next step after that is when somebody else is going through something and they're fretting and they know you haven't been fretting on the stuff you're doing, you can help them. You can help them. You can show them how God is so good That he's a strong tower for you. He's a stronghold for you. That place of refuge, that place of safety. And he knows you because you've trusted in him. So this morning, let's pray this. That and acknowledge him saying, God, you're good. And let's say the name of the Lord. You're my strong tower every single day every single day. Let's pray, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we acknowledge you as good. You are a good, good Father. You don't want to beat us up. You're not up there, some judgmental Father looking down, displeased with us. Lord, you're a good, good Father. And Lord, right now we acknowledge you as such. And right now, I put my trust in you. I come to you as my stronghold, that place of refuge, that place of safety. 
somebody here right now. I'm hearing it right now. You got a relationship issue. You got a relationship issue. And God is saying, put it in my hands. He's saying, just drop it off right here. Mm, come to that safe place, that safe tower. You don't know what to say. You don't know what to do in that relationship. Give it to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, Lord, you are good. Mm, thank you, Jesus. I'm also hearing something else from the Lord right now that you feel like it's just whatever the situation, I'm not sure, but the voice and the, and the thought is it's not going to change. It's never going to change. It's always going to be like this. That's the voice that you're hearing. Here's what you need to do with that voice. I break Every lie of the enemy right now, I break every doubt and unbelief in my life. All fear, I command you to go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You say, TJ, I don't know, I, I, but it's been so many years, it's been so long. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Break it right now in the name of Jesus. Break it. Mm -mm. God wants you free. He desires you free. He desires you to walk with the shoes of peace. The same shoes of peace that the prodigal son was able to put on. Mm, come back. Come back in. Come back into that place of safety, that, that refuge. Mm, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your voice right now. Mm. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever it is right now, before we go, let's do this. Let's just, Lord, I'm calling on you and I'm saying you are good. All this week, I'm going to say it, you are good. Let's just tell the Lord right now, Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are so good. I believe it. Every day, say this, church. Say it to the Lord. Say he's so good. Say that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord. Call on it right now. Hallelujah. Lord, we call on your name. This week, doesn't matter what it is. Faith believing in Jesus' name. All doubt is gone. You say, TJ, I still hear the voices. What I'm saying to you is believe. Cast down that doubt. Trust in the revealed word of God. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Church, trust it. This week, and as you're saying that, that's renewing your mind. God, you're so good. Lord, I'm coming. See, the scripture says he's good. And it says, oh, taste and see that I am good. So it says it. So this week, we do it. I say it till I believe it. Say it till you believe it. Say it till you've got it down on the inside. That's what you have to do with forgiveness. When someone's really done you wrong, you have to forgive and you don't feel it. You don't feel and you still feel angry, you feel all these feelings. Say it every day. I forgive and then fill in the blank. I forgive Dan, Susie, Betty, whatever. It doesn't matter. I forgive. And you say it over and over. I don't even know why I'm talking about this right now. I'm just, it's just hidden. I forgive. And you say it till you believe it. I say that God is good until I believe it. Because that's what his word says. The revealed word of God says you got to forgive. You got to let go. The revealed word of God says that he is good. So despite what you think went on that God, oh, should have saved you from or should have prevented or he, he shouldn't have done this. He shouldn't have done that. No, no, God is good despite all of that. Do I have, know why? No, I don't care. 
That's not being mean. That's just that's the, what the Word says. The Word doesn't say, well, God's good unless you've gone through something really tough. No. It just says God's good. So I will believe that to the end. How many's going to believe with me this week? Amen. Amen. Let's do that and let's believe this week.